Hey, to enjoy the fun at the second annual LA Food and Wine Festival. Doug Kolk knows a good time and he joins us live with a look at what happened last night, what's ahead today. That is a fantastic looking kitchen there. Is this your place, Doug? What a pad. <laughs> yeah, I wish, right? Screams Bachelor, doesn't it, Chris? Yeah. Have you been here yet? No, no, that's more. Remember, oh. everything west of the 101 is <laughs> Wendy's territory. I cover everything <laughs> north of the 101 in the valley and everything east of the 101 into the San Gabriel Valley. You've got to learn the territories, Doug. Well, we knew we knew Wendy was here already. And what's great about this event is there is a little something for everybody. For instance, today they save the best for last, the grand finale Lexus Grand Tasting, where people can not only meet some of these famous chefs that they see on TV, but they get to sample some of their foods, which is unbelievable to some of these food nuts. But what goes better with food than fine wine? Not only do they get to eat the food, they get to sample some wines from some of the greatest vineyards around the world and here in California, of course, known for our vineyards. And as you're eating these foods, you also want to be educated as to what you're consuming. So there's many demonstrations going on so they can learn about the foods they're eating. This is quickly becoming the best event, food event. California is the epicenter of great food and wine. There's a guy who works at a 7-Eleven down the street from me that makes the best. So we come back out live. We do know today is the final day, and we've got several events on tap, including that grand like that Lexus Grand Tasting. That starts at 11.30 today. Great event. We're uh, going to be live all morning, and we're going to get our hands dirty even in the kitchen. So stick with us. <laughs> we'll Doug, back to you guys can I make a request in the next hour when we visit with you? Yes. Uh, everyone likes to get to know Doug better and better, especially the ladies. Especially the ladies. Have your cell phone ready with the art uh, that you got. I ran into Doug in the Home Depot the other day. <laughs> you guys were at the Home Depot yes, together? Yes, we, we had a Home Depot uh, moment. We'll share that in the next hour. All right. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. See you in a little bit. As we get back to the news here, let's check back in with Mr. Doug Kolk, uh, getting ready for the big L.A. Food and Wine Festival today. Doug Polk, this is an amazing festival. I went last year and let's just say it was a food of palooza. Yeah, Chris and Wendy, this is like the most time I've spent in the kitchen since my mom used to force me to do the dishes growing <laughs> up. <laughs> We're with uh, Top Chef Master Floyd Cardoz. He's the owner of the North End Grill in, the, in New York. Why don't you tell us what we're making here? So we're going to make an heirloom tomato salad. Uh, we got beautiful heirloom tomatoes with a little bit of uh, chives, some basil. Always tomatoes and basil are good. A little bit of uh, fennel seed, black pepper, cumin, a little bit of chili powder, and uh, fresh chilies, chives, olive oil, balsamic, and uh, a parmesan tree. So extremely simple. We're going to toast the spices first. So we got, uh, we got black pepper, we got fennel, and we have a little bit of, uh, of cumin. And we're going to toast it until it gets nice and toasty. Then we're going to grind that uh, in a spice grinder to get a nice and fresh powder. And then you can do this at the last minute. So what I love about this salad is you can have people over, makes you look like a master, and you have all these things already done. All you do is just take it all and just mix it in. Ginger, basil, chives, um, a little bit of chili pepper, okay? Some jalapenos right there. Yeah. Jalapeno, balsamic That's vinegar, uh, a little bit of spice. And what you know, kind of spice is that? This is cumin, coriander, and black pepper, okay. and fennel. And I like cilantro, so I'm always adding tons of cilantro. Just keep it going, right? Everything I make, because it, it makes it so much more fun. Some salt, and a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. You, you described this salad as simple, but it seems as it's intricate as well. It, it is intricate, but it's, it's so flavorful, because if you get great tomatoes, the sweetness of the tomatoes works with the heat, with the ginger, with the basil, with the cilantro, with the chives. And then, you know, you put this on the table, and you look like a genius. And all <laughs> you've done is just put ingredients together. And it's but so colorful as well. It's very colorful, and this adds so much to any summer entertaining when you're doing it at home for your kids. Just on a weekday, and you go to the market, pick up some tomatoes, and it makes you want to eat them. You know, just look at it. And then I and always, look how healthy too. And I finish it with a little bit of make some parmesan twills, which is a little bit of parmesan, just heat it up in the oven, uh, right there. Oh, and, and, and and you tell me, wouldn't you want to <laughs> eat that? They always tell you not to eat on camera, but I'm definitely going for this one right now. <laughs> My mouth has been watering the entire time you've been making this. It's good. Thumbs up. It, oh, they're nice. Uh, rough assignment for Doug. You, you always see them when they're sampling this stuff. Yeah. They're always like, oh, yeah, you, you expect them to say it's great. Yeah. Of course this is great. I mean, come on. They're nice. Yeah, I'll what do you this expect? Thing. He's Mr. a master Doug, chef. Can we address some issues? I know. Uh, Mr. Polk? Uh, earlier oh, earlier this attention. week, I was at the Home Depot across the, uh, the 101 from the uh, mm -hmm. station here, and this is a photo I snap. I see Mr. Doug Kolk in the very stylish the... 
the V Network t shirt and all the rest of it. And he's buying some track lighting. He's got his little iPod in and everything. And Doug, uh, what were you doing? What's, what's your home project happening right now? I had a large canvas piece of art shipped from London displaying on my wall. I figured I'd buy some track lighting for it. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Jersey, so. Is this the Hold Springsteen? <laughs> is this the Springsteen art? Like on velvet? I'm from New Jersey. I'm a Springsteen. This sticky. is the way it was explained to me. I've got Bruce Springsteen looking at himself in the mirror, and what he sees back is Bruce Springsteen, but the Transformer with metal robot wings. Now, is that a pretty accurate representation? Because that's what I remember hearing. Yeah, that's pretty much what I wake it up to every day. It is a dude piece you of art. It is so, so dude. So Jersey. You are such a Jersey boy. That is so funny. Born Will you run. take a picture of your Springsteen art and show it to us with your track lighting? Yeah. We'll, sh we'll show you next hit. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen, Robot Wings. Wow. Oh, that's fantastic. I love like it. Jersey Boy's dream come true. <laughs> Coming up, uh, oh, it's still available for some of the events. It's one of the best festivals for foodies ever. So we sent Doug Colt right out in the middle of it all. Oh, and look where you are. That's a lovely, that's a lovely setting, a lovely backdrop for you. So now we're talking cheese, and we're talking cheese with the foremost expert on cheese. And check this out. Laura Whirling is such an expert on cheese, this is her necklace. If we could zoom in on that, Mike. Oh Take my. a look at that. What do you have right there? Mac and cheese, of course. A mac and cheese <laughs> necklace. That's great. This woman knows her cheese, okay? <laughs> That's great. <laughs> Lord, tell us what we've got going on here. Okay, so this isn't mac and cheese, in case you couldn't tell, but what we have here is a, uh, a selection of cheeses, most of them from the United States, uh, that are you know made in, a small, in small batches and really interesting flavors. And it's part of what I'm going to be talking about in my seminar today on cheese and wine pairing, which is a lot of what people want to know about. So here we have, this is a goat cheese made in Aspen, Colorado. You don't really think of Aspen as being a place for cheese making, but believe it or not, there are actually people that work there. And uh, and then next to that, so this is a goat's milk cheese okay. called Cabra Blanca. Then next to this is a um, sheep's milk cheese called Lamb Chopper. Kind of a cute name. <laughs> and um, it's actually made, it's, it's a California company that commissions a, a Dutch company to make it. So it's like a Gouda, but made with sheep's milk. So how do you pair cheeses with wine? Well, you want to go for, um, like if you have a light wine, like a Sauvignon Blanc, when, on a day like this, that's what most people want to have. Um, a light cheese, so goat cheese, Sauvignon Blanc, it's a classic pairing, you can't go wrong with it. And you don't, you just want to have like light cheeses, lighter wines, bigger cheeses, bigger wines, you kind of can't go wrong after that. And you could actually taste it, I mean you could feel the difference when you pair a, a good cheese with a good wine? You definitely can. You can also tell the difference when you pair a cheese with a wine that doesn't work, because then it's sort of like a train wreck in the mouth. But, um, <laughs> but you only, unfortunately, you only know that by experimenting, which is not actually not that unfortunate, because all that means is that you have to try a lot of cheese and a lot of wine uh, until you get it right. But that's not a bad thing to do. And what's great about your seminar is here, you know, people come to the LA Food and Wine Festival, and, and they get to sample the foods from these fantastic chefs, but they also get to learn about the foods that they're consuming, and that's really what your exhibit's all about as well. Yeah, absolutely. People have so many questions about cheese. You know, you go into a grocery store now, there are 100, 200, 300 cheeses to choose from. How do you know what to do, right? So the way to learn is to either listen to me. <laughs> I'm the dictator. I'm learning. Of, I'm the dictator of cheese, actually. Uh, or you, um, um, and or, you have to, you know, the best way is to taste cheeses. So if you know that you like brie, then get a cheese in the in the shelf that looks like brie but isn't called brie, and that's how you, because it'll be similar enough, and that's how you sort of expand your cheese horizons. And then here you see that, I mean, this cheese okay. has, um, it's called tea hive. It's made in um, the famous cheese making state of Utah. And uh, this one we can talk about cheese all day. We can just keep going. Unfortunately, we got to cut the segment oh, short. Okay, well, <laughs> but come yeah. on down, Laura Whirlin. She knows everything Doug, about cheese. We love it. Oh, so we love it you Doug, will too. Let's, let's get back to what we've been dying to talk to you about. Laura, great job with the cheese. Yeah. Last uh, hour we spoke uh, about you uh, running into. I Doug ran into Doug Depot. at the Home Depot. He was buying some track lighting so he could light up his art. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, ladies, if you're ever so lucky to enter Doug's <laughs> Doug's abode. So this is what you're showing right now, right? Oh, Doug! Would you please describe what we're looking at here, Doug? What is this? I warned Laura we'd be showing this. So we're going straight from cheese to Springsteen, which is not appropriate by any means. Let me tell you, okay? <laughs> But this is the uh, an outtake oh. photo from the Born to Run cover. Uh -huh. You see his shadow, There's and his... then you see the the angel wings because that's what he means to me. A he Jersey looks like a boy, transformer. Okay? Wow. I, I was gonna say it looks like he a is a transformer. That is hurting he my dominates. eyes, Doug. And that's Doug buying his track lighting, <laughs> and then you see the track lighting installed. That is wow, painful. Doug.
Doug, we did a segment one time <laughs> called Show Us Your Bad Art, and people sent their bad wall art, and I'm telling you, Doug, you could have won that contest. <laughs> oh, that week. you're gonna hurt his feelings. You're gonna hurt his feelings. <laughs> Wendy, Wendy, I'm not talking to you anymore. Seriously, your cool Young. factor in this town plummeted like that, by 10 points. I'm trying to I look out for so, you, Doug. He is so proud of this. You can't say that. That thing is awesome, okay? I don't care what anybody says. You special ordered what do you that think, from Laura? London? I think it's uh, wonderful. <laughs> There's no sarcasm in her voice. Wonderfully You heard it wonderful. Whatever, Wendy. <laughs> Doug and I are going to take our transformers, right okay. and we're going to have fun this afternoon. <laughs> Whatever, it's Wendy. Transforming Don't mind her, Doug. To a transformer, with, and the track lighting just oh. But look at his smile. Oh, God. Eight fifty-three. Seriously. After, cool. <laughs> after the break, we're going to take a look at what is coming up on the big show tomorrow morning. Some awesome stuff.